Hey guys, what's up? It's Autobot Mike 18 here with a, another movie review. It's a little bit long and overdue, guys, but uh, I do apologize for that. I just got a chance to see this movie this week. But anyway, guys, I in this video, I will be reviewing the new action-packed war film from director Peter Berg, Lone Survivor. Now, guys, I got a little bit of a story as to why this review is so late. Uh, guys, technically, this is a 2013 film because it came out December 26th, 27th of 2013, uh, limited release, of course, and it got a wide release January 10th, so I wanted to see it. I, I watched the trailer, and I knew it was a war film. I like war films, so I definitely wanted to go see the movie, but I also wanted to see her and the new Paranormal Activity, so I had to see those two in the last two weeks, and then this week, I finally it was free to go see Lone Survivor, because I wasn't going to go see that crappy I Frankenstein crap that looks terrible. But <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, as I said, guys, I was looking forward to Lone Survivor, and it wasn't because of the trailer, because the trailer didn't blow me away or anything. You know, it's more or less what we've seen. You know, we, you know we've seen uh, war films before, Hurt Locker, uh, Black Hawk Down. I, we've seen all of it before, so the trailer wasn't anything new or mind-blowing or anything like that, but I wanted to see it because it is a war film, because I like war films. And without a doubt, my favorite war film, guys, is hanging up on my wall over there, Saving Private Ryan, Spielberg, Tom Hanks, I love it. Um, so nevertheless, I was looking forward to Lone Survivor, and I also wanted to see what Peter Berg could do with the movie, because he's kind of hit or miss for some people. You know, some people like his movies, you know, his most recent film, Battleship, you know, was hated, but it made a decent amount of money, so... Uh, you know, as I said, Peter Berg is hit or miss, so I was look, looking forward to seeing what he could do with this film if he was, you know, going to step it up uh, directing a war film. I mean, this is a big, gritty war film with a pretty big cast, so I wanted to see what Peter Berg was going to do. And let me say this much, guys, I think he succeeded directing Lone Survivor because this is a pretty damn good film. This film, as a war film, <laughs> wow. That's all I have to say is wow. I'll explain, uh, I'll you know, discuss that a little bit later, but, um, well, I do have a few problems with the script, just a few minor problems. This is a close to perfect war film. It's one of the most gritty, violent war films I've seen, and, um, it, it, it is a crazy, crazy movie, and, um, I definitely can't wait to start talking about it, which I'm going to do right now. So here we go, guys. First thing I'm going to start talking about is the story behind Lone Survivor. Now, this is one of those war films that's based on true events. Now, most war films that come out, they're either based on true events or they're not. This one is. And actually, the, the screenplay is based off of a book of the same name that is written by one of the Navy SEALs uh, who survived all of this in the movie. So that's another thing I wanted to point out. So anyway, guys, Lone Survivor is actually the um, based on a true story of the 2005 uh, Navy SEAL operation known as Operation Red Wings. Now, I, at first, I did not hear anything about this story, and I didn't want to read up about it because I didn't want to know what happened to these men, what happened in this operation. So I didn't read up about this before I went to go see the movie. But it turns out that there was a four-man Navy SEAL team that was deployed on this mission back in 2005. Their goal was to find, capture, and kill this very ruthless Taliban leader. And during their mission, they're literally deployed, they're stealthily hiding, and they're just waiting to continue with the mission. Something completely unexpected happens to these men. It's spoiled in the trailer completely, guys, but I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, so I'm not going to say what it is, but something completely unexpected happens to these men and it forces them to make a very difficult decision that could cost some of them their lives, it could cost some of them their futures, and um, it definitely has some very devastating negative effects on these men, and it's all because of this one decision that they had to make, and it is a very, very crucial life-changing decision, I must add, that definitely results in this insane gun battle between them and the this uh, the Taliban armed forces. So that's all I'm going to say in regards to the plot of Lone Survivor, guys. Now, um, as I said, the one of the main characters in the film, uh, played by Mark Wahlberg, is Marcus Luttrell. He survived all of this, and he, he uh, wrote about this whole experience and published it in his book, Lone Survivor. And Peter Berg, you know, he heard about the story, turned it, you know, over years, turned it into a film, worked on the film. Like, he started, like, sometime in 2007 or something like that and uh, finally finished the movie last year. 
But um, Lone Survivor, guys, I can say this much. While it does have its flaws in the script that aren't major or anything like that, like the overall story is very, not only intense, but it's very just, it's gritty and it's very disturbing. But apart from those flaws, this is without a doubt a fantastic war film. And that's the main reason why I like this movie. I went into this movie to see a very action-packed, war film that, um, and I got it when I got out of this film, and that's why I liked it. I mean, it is just so gritty. Some of the things that happen in this movie are so gritty and disturbing. My jaw was dropping in, like, several scenes in the film, and, I mean, it is one of the most violent war films I've seen, uh, probably the most violent since Black Hawk Down or Saving Private Ryan, as I've mentioned, but, um... I'll talk about Peter Berg's direction a little bit later on. Man, he's impressed me since Battleship. I mean, he did a good job with Battleship. I didn't hate Battleship. It was definitely a great film. Uh, not an extraordinary film. You know, it was a great action movie. But he just really impressed me with Lone Survivor. Uh, definitely a step up. And the cast itself did a really good job as well. So that's what I actually want to discuss now is the cast and performances, which are another great factor for this film. Let's briefly discuss Mark Wahlberg's performance as Marcus Luttrell, uh, the, basically the main character. Um, you know, Mark Wahlberg is really on a roll in his career. I mean, everywhere you turn, and I think you guys are going to agree with me this in the comments, everywhere you turn, Mark Wahlberg's in a new movie. Mark Wahlberg was in Ted. He, he's going to be in the new Transformers movie, and I, I just can't wait to see what Wahlberg's going to do next. He's such a great actor, and he's without a doubt one of the better actors we have working today in Hollywood, because he's just, he's all over the place, and he's in so many good movies. And this is one of his better films that I've seen from him. His performance in, in the first two, two acts of the film w was fantastic, but what really got me was the third act. He really shined in the third act of the film, and he, he was just, he was brilliant. His performance was, felt real, and it really, I really broke down. I felt bad for his character towards the end of the film. Um, he was really great in the film, uh, portraying this, this guy, Marcus Luttrell, and um, uh, Wahlberg, thumbs up, you did a great job in the movie. Now, the rest of the cast, the rest of the Navy SEALs are also played by well-known actors. You have uh, Taylor Kitsch, who, this is his, I think, second collaboration with Peter Berg since Battleship. Um, uh, Taylor Kitsch plays the lieutenant in the film of the Navy SEALs, and Taylor Kitsch, you know, he's... Not very loved by the public, you know. I would agree that he doesn't always show the, the, the most emotion, but he's not a bad actor or anything like that. Taylor Kitsch was definitely good in the film. Um, I, honestly, out of all the movies I've seen him in, this is probably his best that I've seen him in. That's not to say much. He hasn't been in too many extraordinary films, but this is the best I've seen him in so far. Uh, he was really good in the film. You also have uh, Ben Foster in the movie. He was good. Emil Hirsch is another Navy SEAL. It's Mark Wahlberg, um, uh, Taylor Kitsch, Emil Hirsch, and Ben Foster. They're the four Navy SEALs in the movie. They all gave great performances in their scenes. Uh, also, you have Eric Bana plays uh, one of the guys in charge of the Navy SEAL unit. And uh, also you have Alexander Ludwig, who makes a brief appearance in the film. He's another Navy SEAL. And all of these performances were great. All of the acting is really, really extraordinary with the film. Um, nothing, you know, Oscar-worthy or anything like that, but it's really great A acting for a war film like this. Uh, i got to give props to the actors for that. But anyway, um, moving on... Uh, Let's real quickly talk about this. I, I, I'm trying to stop talking about a film's rating, like the film's actual rating, like PG-13R. I'm trying to stop doing that, but I have to talk about that with this film. This film is rated R very appropriately. Uh, please do not take your children to go see this movie. Wow. Like I said, this is one of the most grittiest, uh, violent war films I've ever seen. I mean, there's just shots of these characters with blood running down their face, and it's just like never ending. And that is definitely one reason why you should not take your kids to go see this movie, or even if it's on TV, just change the channel. This is not a movie for children to see at all. But that being said, guys, I am going to give my official rating of Lone Survivor, and of course talk about a few other things that I really liked with the film. In the end, I am going to give Lone Survivor a solid 9 out of 10. It is a near flawless war film, in my opinion. And one thing, as I said, I look, go to a war film to have a really 
good time to be sucked in by the story, which I was with this film. I wanted, you know, unbelievably uh, exciting action sequences, and that's what I got. And I also, another thing that I wanted was for, you know, respect to be paid to the men uh, that these actors were portraying in the film. And I think that was, def that was definitely the case with this film, because it, especially with the end of the movie, I love what they did with that tribute. But this is, apart from those few script problems that I had with the movie, I really did enjoy Lone Survivor. It's definitely enough for me, I can definitely recommend it enough to you guys, because... I mean, especially if you know someone in the Navy or someone who's a part of the Marines, you'll definitely connect with this movie. If you lost a soldier, you will definitely connect with this film. If you are a soldier yourself, I mean, I, I think that this is a pretty accurate war film. That's one reason why I love the movie. It was just so, it felt so genuine. And I researched this story after watching the movie, and well, I think they really nailed it. I think Peter Berg did a great job writing the script and directing the film. And I think he nailed it. So that's what I actually want to discuss. Peter Berg directing and writing the film. I think he did a fantastic job directing the movie. Definitely a step up above Battleship, without a doubt. It's just some of his, you know, camera shots in the movie. You have shots of these shoulders, soldiers rolling down this hill and just the, the sounds of them thudding the hill, you know, like crashing into rocks and everything. Some of those shots were just crazy. That My audience members were gasping in these scenes and Peter Berg just did an amazing job directing this film. Wow. Uh, the screenplay itself, while it does have a few problems, the actual story itself is very intense. It's nail-biting. It's gripping. And that's one reason why I love this movie as a war film. I was definitely, and because I didn't know what was going to happen to these men, to these characters, I, w I loved the movie even more. So, it's one thing I definitely got to praise the film. As I said, all the performances were really, really good in the movie. Uh, of course, this is a war film. How can I not talk about the action in the film, the tactics of these SEALs? It's awesome. And, you know, what you'd expect in a war film, plus that. There is this, literally, there is this one long 30-minute gunfight scene. I'm not even lying. This scene had to have gone on for at least 30 minutes in the middle of the film between the, the SEALs and the Taliban. I didn't look at my watch. It felt like it was a 10 minute gunfight. That's how quick it went by. But when I did look at my watch at the end of the gunfight, I was like, what? I can't believe four, uh, 30 minutes just went by. It, it was crazy. And that is just how action packed this film is. And that is definitely one reason why I really enjoyed the film. Um, I loved where they filmed this movie. That's another thing. The film location, where, you know, where it was set in this mountain with all these trees, a lot of places for these seals to take cover. Really loved all that. All the tactics, all that was great with the film. The editing was great. Cinematography, the way the camera was moved. There wasn't any shaky cam crap that you couldn't even see the action sequences. So I really enjoyed that with the film. A lot of good things going for this movie. As for a few complaints, I will say this much. A couple, and this happens in most action movies where there's gunfights. There are a few, you know, shots where, you know, there's a gunfight and someone gets shot, but it happens so quickly, the editing, uh, you don't even see who gets shot, really. So that happened a couple times in the film, like, just little rushed editing and a few gunfight scenes. Um, hard to tell who gets shot, who doesn't. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. And getting back to a few problems I had with the script, and I know this is going to sound cliche because a lot of people have been saying this about the movie, character development wasn't... It was good, especially for Wahlberg's character, but a couple times I just didn't feel all emotionally invested or attached to some of the characters in the film. Some I did, some I didn't. So it's just a problem here or there. And also the beginning of the movie, I thought they were rushed into the mission a little too quickly. I wanted to see more of these men actually at their base, you know, but they just, they kind of rushed into that. But other than that, guys, this is a near fantastic war film that I definitely uh, recommend you guys see it in the theaters on the big screen. The sound editing was great. This film was nominated for sound editing and sound mixing at the Oscars. Definitely well deserved. Just like all of the different, you know, gunfire and all that is, is just great in the film. And another thing, I'm going to recommend you guys see this movie, but don't read up about the story before you go see because I think you're going to spoil the whole movie. Like, I went into this movie completely blind. Please do that because you'll, you'll thank me. Trust me, you'll thank me. Anyway, guys, uh, that's real all I have to say about Lone Survivor, a fantastic uh, war film that is really gritty, paid respect to the soldiers that the actors were portraying. 
It's really genuine. It felt real in my face. Uh, my jaw dropped in several scenes. It was intense gripping. I really did enjoy it, and I do recommend you guys check it out. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of Lone Survivor down below in the comments. And also, let me know what's your favorite war film. As I said, mine, Saving Private Ryan. I covet that movie. What is your guys' favorite war film? Let me know down below. So thank you guys very much for watching. Bye, guys.